All right, so today I want to start with some review. Do you remember that x squared minus 4 can be factored? You might think, oh, that's a long time ago. Or you might just be sitting there playing Temple Runner. That goes on my desk. Too late. Nope. Up there now. Okay, this is x plus 2, x minus 2. That is factoring. You're supposed to know how to do that. You can't just, like, forget all your other math when we're in trig. In fact, I think you're going to find that the hardest part of today is the algebra stuff that you have to be able to do with the trig. So why am I doing this? Because today you'd have something like secant squared minus 4, and you'd have to know how to handle that. Okay, so again, this is called the difference of squares. See, that's a perfect square, that's a perfect square. And so I can break it down into this. Do you get that? All right, let's try another one like that. x squared minus 1. Will that break up into two things? Well, only if this is a perfect square, but it is. Okay, go ahead, back to that. What's that? x plus 1, x minus 1. Good. So then, why am I doing this again? Because you're going to have to factor things like this. Sine squared of x minus 1. Isn't this pretty much like an x squared? Yes, it is. So, it can be factored. Go ahead. Yeah, sine of x minus 1 and sine of x plus 1. And here's where it comes in handy. Let's say that the problem was like this. This over sine of x minus 1. You know what kids will do all the time? They'll go, oh, there's two of them on the top, one of them on the bottom. I can just cancel the one on the bottom, and the one on the top, I'll just cancel out this part of it. So it's just sine x over 1. And I really get what they're thinking, but they're wrong. It doesn't work that way. What really happens is the top here breaks into this. And then the bottom is sine x minus 1 still. See? Just bringing that down. So what part cancels? The sine x minus 1 part cancels. And so what's left is sine x plus 1. Do you get how when they cancel the other way, they're going to get sine x minus 1 and it'll be wrong? Okay. All right. So let's see if you really got that. Try this one. It'll be very similar. Cosine squared x minus 4 all over cosine of x plus 2. And what's going on is this is pretty easy. If you get how to factor these, this is part of the easy. All right, hopefully you change this to cosine of x plus 2 and cosine of x minus 2. And then the bottom is cosine x plus 2. And then this will cancel this, and the answer is cosine x minus 2. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Next thing. You have to be able to handle common denominators. Um, can you add these together right now? Can't add them together because they don't have a common what? Denominator. But you could... Multiply this side by cosine over cosine, or there's a smarter way. Tangent equals sine over cosine. So you can just change this into sine over cosine, and then the other one has a cosine already, so they now have a common denominator. See? Now I can add them. And that means their answer will have a cosine x on the bottom. All right. Do you get that they now have a common denominator? So now they can be added. Sine x plus secant x all over what? Cosine x. I'm not saying that that's super simple, but the point is, can you figure out how to get common denominators so you can do that? The reason is, a lot of times, the top part will end up canceling off when you do it. It didn't in this case, but... The top part will end up canceling off, and then you'll just have like 1 over cosine, and then the answer would be like secant. 
All right. So you got to know how to find common denominators like this. So let's do another one like that. Let's say I had tangent of x. The answer for that one was just to leave it because it couldn't be simplified any further. Um, plus, let's say, um, this is just a just for the sake of finding common denominators. See if you can find a common denominator for these two. Well, if you just go, well, they don't have denominators. They could be any denominator. Well, yeah, I suppose, but you're kind of missing the point. What should I rewrite tangent as? Hmm. Is this a problem that you were just doing? Can't tell if I've moved it. Okay, good. So then, this part right here, you could say, is sine over cosine plus cosine. Do they have a common denominator yet? No. Could I make them have a common denominator? Yes. How? Okay, you could write cosine as 1 over secant. You're right. But that's not going to give me a common denominator. Then the one will have a secant over here, and this one will have a cosine. They're not the same. They're inverses of each other, yeah. That's not what I want. I want a common denominator. I want this to be cosine. How do I make this cosine here? Multiply by cosine x over cosine x. That is a crucial skill. Why am I doing that? Because I want this side to have a cosine for a denominator so it can match up with this side. And if I do that, a lot of kids don't get why you can just multiply by this. Because the thing I just circled in green is really equal to 1. So I can times anything by 1. It's okay. You can always do that. Anytime you want to. Okay, turn your iPad towards me now. What are you doing? No, you're not. Are you really? Because it doesn't seem like the person behind you would be laughing about it. Okay, how about you get, you get with me? Because your problem, if nothing else, your problem's not on the, on the screen there. Okay, lay the iPad down so that I can see what's on it. Thank you. Just, just keep working. I, I believe iPads can be used well, and they often are, but when the kid behind you laughing at what you're putting on the screen, it usually means it's not bad. Okay, so this is cosine squared x on the top. So now I've got sine x over cosine x plus si or cosine squared x over cosine x. And now they have a common denominator, so now they can actually be added together. And now I have sine, uh, not squared, sorry. sine x plus cosine squared x all over cosine x. Now, I just forced you to add them together. In this case, it didn't work out nice. But what if this had been a sine squared x? Do you get how sine squared x plus cosine squared x? Nope, nope. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x would equal what? No. 1. Okay. And it's 1 over cosine, which is... All right. But my point is, you got to know how to find a common denominator. All right, so that's a cr crucial skill for right now. Know how to multiply by, like, cosine over cosine. Yes? Okay, I am not trying to finish this problem here, okay? I get that, that this is not very simplified. But my point was, do you know how to find a common denominator and get it all into one fraction? Because a lot of times, they will just cancel out nicely. All right. Can't you... Co okay, no. You can't just go cancel these, cancel this. Here's why. Because it's an adding. It would be like saying this, 1 plus 5 over 5. Can't you just cancel those 5s? No, you can't. Because why? Because there's a plus there. Okay, if this had been a times, then can you cancel those 5s? Yes, you can. Okay, but if there's a plus there, you can't. All right. Okay, so this, yes, again... I, could you possibly go farther on this? You might even be able to, but it might take me 20 minutes to make it any more simple than it is right now. So I didn't mean for this one to be a simplify all the way. All I was asking is, can you find a common denominator so you can make it add together? So for what I wanted to do, I'm done. Could you possibly figure out some way to simplify it further? Maybe. That's not my goal. And maybe you can't simplify this further either. Not everything can be simplified. But the 
The problems we give you usually can't. All right, here is a brutally uh, tough one. It's from today's homework. It was number, no wait, we did number 10 yesterday in class, didn't we? I think I helped you with number 10, didn't I? That's the reminder that in 10 minutes you can bust me on or 15 or whatever it is. Okay. All right. So uh, my next part is where I take uh, a really tough problem and work it through with you. I want to do one from today's worksheet. So I'm going to actually hand out today's worksheet. So I'm going to pause for a second while I hand those out. Okay. One last thing before we start the worksheet that I think is important. You got to be able to handle this. factoring this. It's a lot like factoring this. If I had x plus x squared, could I factor an x out of that? Yes, I could. I could factor an x out and it would become what? I heard two, at least one of them was wrong. Okay, let's try this again. Nope. Well, okay, okay. Maybe you're just putting the wrong order. When I take the x out of this, what do I get? One. I take the x out of this, plus there we go. And yes, that's the same as x plus 1. But, all right. So do you get how I factored an x out of both of these and put it at the front? Now, that same thing's going to happen up here. And when I factor this x, this sine x out of both of them, I will have 1 plus sine x. Do you get what just happened there? If you've got a sine here and a sine here, there's one in each of them, then it can be factored out. Another way to think of that is this times this gives me that, and this times this gives me that. So now you've got to be able to factor. All right. That being said, here's the tough one I want to work with you. E as an elephantiasis is, on your worksheet, tangent x over cosecant squared x plus tangent x over secant squared x. Now, a few things come to mind as I'm doing this. The first thing that I was thinking is, oh, the one with the tan is what we see. So I could put, instead of here, instead of secant, do you see I could put a 1 plus tangent there? But that doesn't work. Or if it works, it works a long time from now. It takes a complicated, like, process to get there. So I tried that way. That didn't work so well. Um, then I thought about that general thing, like whenever you're stuck, what's a good method? change everything into sines and cosines. So let's do that. This tangent on the top could be replaced with what? Sine over cosine. You might want to stay with me on this every step because otherwise you'll have to copy down a monstrous set of steps. At the end. Over the cosecant can be written as a sine in here and a cosine. Okay, John, all right, that goes on my desk. Okay, I'm, you're, now we're wasting my time. All right. Uh, the cosecant is 1 over sine squared. I'm just changing everything sine to cosine. Plus the tangent sine x over cosine x over secant 1 over cos or cosine. Now remember, if they start out as squared things like this did, then they need to be squared things when they're done. This started out as a squared, so that ends up with a squared thing. This started out as a plane, then this has got to be plane, not squared. All right. So, wow, that did not seem any easier. So what do I do now? Flip and multiply. Whenever you can do that, it usually makes some things cancel. All right. Now, there may be a better way, and I honestly, I'd love it if somebody sees something smarter to do right now than to uh, flip these fractions and multiply. Because this is, it's still going to take a while to get done, but can anybody see something cool we could do? A lot of times there's a smarter way. Yeah, Wolfram Alpha is awesome, but it's not going to be available on your test. Wolfram Alpha, in case you don't know, is a basically the Google of math. And if you type in things into Wolfram Alpha, it can solve them. But your test that won't save you. All right. 
So back to, I guess I'm going to flip and multiply these. So I'm going to rewrite this as sine x over cosine x. Now, if you can do this in your head, this part, I'm fine with that. But for somebody trying to explain it on a video, I better rewrite it here. I just changed that to a, take the bottom, flip it over, and make it a multiply. Now I'm going to make the right side here, this part here, sine x or cosine x times cosine squared x over 1. Whew! Brutal. If it was squared, I could. Oh. You talking about this one right here? Oh, this one. Could I change that to a one or a cosine squared minus one? Yes, I could. Do you think that would help? I don't think it would help, but it would. It's an idea. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna keep on moving here. Now I've got this gets a little weird. What do you do when you got sine x times sine squared x? Sine cubed x. Yes, you do. Sine cubed x over cosine x. Plus the right side here. Now something's going to cancel here. See how I got cosine squared and a cosine? At least something canceled. So it's sine x. And then did both cosines cancel? Nope, just one of them. Cosine x. All right. I'm getting there. Still not, though. I know, you might have to transfer to a separate sheet of paper or something to finish your work. Nope, this is a mo this is an add problem, so it won't cancel. Somebody was asking if I could cancel these, can't. All right, I'd love to. Oh, different spot, yep. If I keep the denominators the same. Oh, oh. Ooh, that's good though. All right, so what she's, she asked was, right here, couldn't I have added them together instead of doing the, the little cancel thing I did? Yeah, I think I like that. I'm gonna not do it the way I was planning on doing, I'm gonna do it your way. So I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna try doing what you just said, which is now that these both have a denominator of cosine x, I can add them together. So the tops here, become sine cubed x plus sine x cosine squared x all over cosine x. And I know that may not seem good, but I know where we can go next. Do you remember that thing I was telling you about factoring something out? Could come in handy right here. What can I factor out? I can factor out a sine. And then on top here, because see this has a sign and this also has a sign. So I can factor out a sine x, and I'll have sine squared x plus what? Cosine squared x. And whenever you've got that, you can go. Because why? Because that whole thing right there, what's that equal to? One. And then it's just sine over cosine, which is tangent. And of course, all good problems turn out to just equal tangent. The answer is just tangent. What if you, that's a good question. What if you had just like gotten halfway through the problem and then said, I think it's going to be tangent. No, you won't get credit. These, you have to show how it gets there. Otherwise, you know how this works. The answer for number six could get out. Like, hey, I think the answer is number six is tangent. The really smart kid from the first hour says it's tangent. Okay, and no, I can't give you credit for that. You gotta show me how it gets there. All right. Some work not good enough. You have to show all the steps. Now, you know, then you don't get it credit. Okay, now how many, like, do you have to show every single possible little step? Not necessarily. But yeah, I at least have to see all, like, if you got to here and you like did this, and I saw one there, like, oh, that turns into one, poof, I see then, I can see that's really two steps at once, but I'm fine with going from here to here, that's fine. But you certainly could not go, 
from this and say, well, obviously the answer is tangent. When you look at that, you're not going to just know that the answer is tangent. Okay. Well, some people say. Okay. That was a hard one. That was number what problem? E? E. That's an elephant size. All right. Let's go to uh, <laughs> F as in fireworm. No, I don't. I think we'd rather. Yes? Go ahead. All right, this is one of those things that's begging you to give the cotangent one, or the co-function. Do you remember this on, on the list of, the, so then, what's the co-function of tangent? Cotangent. So this would be cotangent x. So if I saw this in a problem, I'd replace it with that. All right. <laughs> Try that again. Okay, so you mean the cosine of pi over 2 minus x? That would just be sine of x. Not yet. Negative, what? Are you serious? Negative cosine of what? Go ahead. All right. Is that on there? Is that on one of your sheets? Okay, I don't think we ever have a plus x. That's what's throwing me off here. So I think you'd have to change. If you change that to a minus, okay, then all it is is what's the answer to this sine of x, and then you just put a negative on the front. So it would be negative sine of x. We'll talk more later after lunch. Lunchtime, go. Here we go again, back from lunch. I put on the board here. Uh, one of the sets of things that you need to know, this is on your sheet already, I think, but one kid did not have this written correctly on his sheet, and I wanted to put them back up for them. We got them copied yet? All right, good. Uh, and just in case, these are the ones that are the co-function ones, like tangent goes with cotangent, sine goes with cosine, secant goes with cosecant, and when you have this on the one side and this on the other, if you think about it, when you add them together, you make 90. Because see, 90 minus x and a plus x would cancel each other out. So this together makes 90. That's kind of the theme. This together makes 90. All right. Any questions about those? Okay. So uh, I think we've gone over several difficult problems, uh, and I think... Maybe we should just do one more to kind of get you back in the groove of things. So look on your sheet. Is anybody stuck on one you'd like me to help you get going on? Yes, ma'am. G as in giraffalope. Or girl, yes. Depends on what's on your mind, I guess. All right. Would you, uh, would you start by reading me? Uh, why don't you read me? G as in girl. Sign X. Cotangent squared x. Oh, oh, I got you. So minus on a whole new thing here. Go on. All right. First thought, do they have a common denominator? No, they don't. So to be able to add these two big fractions together, we should get a common denominator. I'm thinking maybe we write this one right there as sine over, no, cosine over sine, and then see if, well, when we're all done simplifying this, if it's got a cosine squared on the bottom. Because then if it does, then we got a common denominator, right? So let's see if we can do that. So this top will stay the same for now, and the bottom will be cotangent. I could do 1 over tangent. That doesn't really help, though. So I'm going to go with the cotangent is cosine over sine. So cosine squared x over sine squared x. And now when I do the flip and multiply thing, this comes up here and gets flipped over and multiplies. So I'm going times sine squared over cosine squared. Yes, it does have cosine squared in the, in the denominator. So, uh, so this times that now becomes sine cubed on the top and cosine squared on the bottom. 
You see what I just did there? So now on the left hand side, this whole thing here has now become sine cubed x over cosine squared x. And now it can actually go together with this one that already had a cosine squared x in it. Now that they have a common denominator, it should be relatively easy. Sine cubed x minus sine x, and I bet you some of you are noticing what I can do there, over cosine squared x. You see what I can do here? Factoring thing, the new thing I started talking about. Notice how there's a sine in both of them? That's the way I started the hour today. So sine x and then sine squared x minus 1 all over cosine squared x. And what is sine squared x minus 1? I happen to know that one. In case you've forgotten, I'm going to go off to the side and write this out. It's cosine squared plus, oh, I need an x in there. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So if I want sine x minus 1, uh-oh, it should be the other way around. It should be a 1 minus sine x. Oh, man, this is a really complicated problem. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. So I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to put this over to the other side. And I'm going to have cosine squared x would equal 1 minus sine squared x. All right. Ooh, brutal. I wonder if you guys can handle this. We'll see. Do you get do you get how this right here? Wait a minute. Why is this this is on your worksheet? This one right here is like the first one I did. Oh, why is the why are there hard problems? Because this is your third day on this now. And so you're supposed to be getting smarter and smarter and we got to challenge you if it was just what's tangent equal to by now you'd be like, "Come on, this is Okay, so these are hard. All right, so back to this was the starting thing, and then I can make it into this. And do you get how 1 minus sine squared is a lot like sine squared minus 1? It's just like backwards. You know what you can do to something if you want to completely reverse, like 1 minus x turning into x minus 1 if you want to reverse the order? This is one of those little algebra things. Just make sure you get this off to the side. x minus 1, if I want to turn that into 1 minus x, you know what you do to it? Multiply it by negative 1. Yes. So if I want to multiply this by negative 1, I multiply by negative 1 here, and I multiply by a negative 1 on this side, and I get negative cosine squared x would equal, reverse this, sine squared x minus 1. So I could put in a negative cosine x right there. Ooh, tough. Yes, it'll be awesome if I put that there. Watch, just a second. I'll be back up in a minute and show you how I did this. But I just am replacing sine squared x minus 1 with negative cosine squared x. And why is it awesome to put that there? Because now the cosine squared x's can cancel. One just happens to be negative. That negative gets left behind. See, cancel, cancel. The answer is negative sine x. Okay, now how did I do that again? I had something here that looked kind of familiar. It made me think of this saying right here, that cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. But it wasn't quite right. It was going to be backwards. It was supposed to be 1 minus sine squared, and instead it was sine squared minus 1. And so to get that backwards, if you ever want the exact opposite, you can put in the opposite of what you should have put in. So normally you were thinking maybe it should be cosine, but since it's exactly backwards, you have to put in backwards cosine, which is negative cosine. All right, that's why I could put a negative cosine right here, and then my cosines would cancel. Tough, I know. So what does that imply? That implies whenever you have an answer like, uh, that's, it's a, that's a subtract, okay, so that's usually going to be this one. And this one will bring you two things. You can either do this one. And there's this one. Cosine, you could solve it for this instead. Would equal, and bring the sine over to the other side, 1 minus sine squared x. Whenever you have these guys, 
and there's a subtract involved, it's supposed to be like this. And what if it's reversed? Then you just put in the opposite of whatever you were going to put in. So if I was going to put in sine x, I put in the opposite of sine x. If I was going to put in cosine x for this, but it's completely backwards, then put negative cosine x instead. All right, that's tough stuff. Remember I was saying it's hardest week of the year? See if you can hang with it. We got, we're going to have to test middle of next week, so about a week from now. A little, little, maybe a little more. Might be more of the end, towards the end of the week next week. See. Okay, one day at a time. So you got a few hard ones. Don't expect you to be perfect. Answers are going to start to, start to get posted, though, I believe, tonight. So that should help. And uh, just make sure you budget enough space, too. You've seen me do these. It often takes me what would be comparable to a half of a page. So I get that on your worksheet you have, you're going to have to either write really small or you're going to have to go off on a separate sheet of paper and do it. But, you know, take, take the room that it takes to be able to do these. All right. 30 minutes worth of video is done.